All right, and we are live. I'm I'm gonna see. Yes, I think we're live. I can see it on YouTube. So welcome everybody to this live stream. On this live stream, what we're gonna do is we are going to guess Russia from just a Google Maps location. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the uh, the thing very very soon, so we can get it set up. And uh, in fact, before I before I do that, I'm going to send you guys the link to this. It's going to be in the description. Okay. Uh, play as well. Bam. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to uh, do this as well, uh, to play along this thing, you can do it. The link is in the description. So. The gist of this all is that what we're going to do today, it's not going to be in your Russian language today, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to look at Google Maps. It's a, an app or website called Geo or Geo Guesser. Okay? And we're going to look at just the Google Maps location. And we'll try to figure out which city it is, which thing it is, or what's the region. And the closer you get to the actual location of that location, of Geo, 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 Geo location? I think Geo location. Uh, okay, somebody's being rude. In the, let me just uh, put user in timeout. All right. Okay, so anyway, I was sidetracked. We will guess location by just looking at the picture. So let's get started. And you guys can play along as well if you want to. It's The, the link is in, in the description, so you can do it at your own time. We're going to do it once, just me doing it by myself. And then I believe that there is a challenge thing that you guys can play along as well so all right let me uh open this up okay all right so here it is you guys tell me how to pronounce this gale guesser or jail guesser i think it's gale guesser right so okay you can choose from a variety of different maps and it will draw a random location from that place, and you have to guess where it is. So we're going to click on Russia today. I've only done a couple of runs to kind of test it out. So this is how it works. Now, we're not going to have any time limits to the guess, and moving around the map is allowed as well. So let's start the game. Okay. Um, well, okay, this uh, just gives us... Oops. Can I go back? Yes. Amur. Right here, Amur Shinda means Amur Tire. So somewhere in near Amur, I, I think Amur is a river or something. I'm not entirely sure. And then you can look around and see. Um, yes, Gorod. So this is the address, Gorod Sovetskaya Gavin. This one is going to give us a lot of clues of where it is. But typically, of course, you're not going to have these signs to uh, to understand. Okay. Okay. All right. It's somewhere near Amur. I'm not. The, the best person to know all the locations in Russia, but I know that Amur is somewhere right here. I believe this is Japan already. I'm gonna show my uh, this is Lena River, that's not it. Um, I'm gonna show my lack of uh, my uh, ignorance in Russian stuff here. Is, is Lake Amur something? Okay, but it's somewhere in the in the in the east, so I'm gonna just go ahead and guess. Uh, let's guess it right here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, there it is. It's a whole city. It comes Amursk na Amuria. So Amur is this river, I believe. Yes, it's a river Amur. It goes like that. But I had that just from that little sign of the Amur tire. Okay. So let's play another one. Next round. Okay, where the heck is this? Okay, so let's try to see from the greenery around. So we see that it's not that green, so it's not anywhere like in the forest areas. You can see kind of over there. Okay, some mountains right there in the back. Um, the roads are pretty nice. The roads are pretty nice, and you can see that there's a. Uh, it's not like a, it's it's a well, 
kind of uh, structured route from one place to another. So I'm going to guess it's somewhere um, in Ural area. I'm going to guess it's somewhere right here. Okay, not that far, not that far. So it's somewhere near the city Edinburgh. Uh, what kind of gave me a clue is that it's not that mountainish, mountainy. It's not a lot of mountains in, in like around. So you can see it's kind of like a plain area right here. And then it's also some road that goes from one big city to another because the roads typically back home, if they're not, uh, if the paintings aren't that well done on the road, if it's not a lot of um, things around it, like as as you saw, there was some you know some side things to protect you from falling from the road. So those are typically a sign of some big cities uh, back home. We kind of have those. I live in Novosibirsk right here. We kind of have those going from Novosibirsk to Altai, Novosibirsk to Omsk a little bit. So you can kind of have it there. So it's from a big city to, to another big city. So I guess it's from Ufa to Arimburg. That was the road, right? Yeah. So as you can see, Ufa is a pretty big city. Arimburg is a pretty big city as well. So it's kind of road going here. All right, next round. Okay. Mardov. So it's somewhere in Mardovia. If uh, if if only I knew where Mardovia is. <laughs> okay. Again. Uh, so as you can see right here, right here, this is a perfect example. This is not some well-populated area, or at least this is a road not going from one populated area to another. Because you see the road? You see any? You see this line right here? It's kind of already fading out. <laughs> but yeah, and you see the guy right here on the bike. Where did he go? Where did he go? Come back, dude. Come back. Where did he go? Where was that? Right here somewhere? Yes. So, as you can see, the guy is on the wrong side of the road, first of all. Tells you there's not a lot of traffic. All right. So, Mardovia. Where's Mardovia? I'm going to show my, again, my ignorance. I think Mardovia is somewhere here, no? Wait. Uh, oh, my God. This is just embarrassing. Is Mardovia here? Oh my gosh. Okay. Is Mardovia here? Kazil. OMG. I, I was under the impression that it's somewhere right here. Okay. All right. This is my final guess. It's going to be somewhere. No, this is not it. Is it somewhere here? Near Krasnodar? I'm completely lost. Oh my gosh. This is outright embarrassing. I mean, I heard Mardovia a whole bunch in my life, but it's cannot. Pin, pin, pinpoint it. Okay, we're gonna go with OMG. All right, somewhere right here. Ah, uh, close enough. Oh, near Kazan. Okay, so it was. So where's Mardovia? Okay. All right. Well, close enough. You know, uh, a thousand kil uh, kilometers, not that far. Okay, so kind of good. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we're going back. Let me see how it looks. Okay. All righty. Going back now. Now, how am I supposed to guess this? Again, uh, the road is not that developed. That's number one. It's somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Because so, you can see there's no, no, no big signs, no gas stations. Okay. Is dead till doesn't really give us like a little okay. Let me let me go back down just a little bit. What well, see, like the name of the city or the little town doesn't really give it Tver. Oh, so it's near Tver. So as you can see, Tver right here is the city name right there. Tver, okay. I'm cheating, but it's allowed. I can move around, right? 
Okay, this is the gas station that I have never seen in my life. What is that? A star? Is there a name? No. Okay, so near Tver somewhere. So Tver is somewhere right here. If Tver is going, there it is. So it's probably somewhere here-ish. Let me see the roads here. Okay, somewhere right here, I would say. Okay, hey, 100 kilos, okay. So what kind of gave it away to me is that, first of all, oops. Oh, I can see that with the map, okay. What kind of gave it away was that, um, again, the road is not that developed. So, and then the, it, it couldn't be any of these interstates. That's number one. So somewhere in, the, in here. I was thinking it's going to be more like coming down. Okay, all right, next round. Um, this is some countryside. So this is what a uh, typical Russian, you know, <laughs> house would look like. As you can see, it has a lot of those Russian kind of uh, ornaments there. Uh, this is a Russian car, another Russian car. So it's kind of like, a, I would say, some like countryside. But where in the world is this countryside? So, okay, these kind of um, ornaments around the windows on the one, two, three, no, this is two. No, this is not giving me. Up. Um, I can see that they're made in some like old, oldish style. So I would say that these are not that old, uh, or they're in a more traditional way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lean toward toward the central central Russia a little more. I have really no idea, but I'm gonna go with somebody under Varonish. Not that far. Okay. So what gave it away to me this time was that under Nizhny Novgorod, rather. So it, again, Central Russia, is that it's it's well it's well put together. That's number one. As you can see, the uh, the, the fences are done all, all right. It's pretty accurate. It's pretty petite. It's it's looking good right so it's not like a complete mess um, some other places where it's further from from the central russia is going to be less less money there number one and so people typically don't go for these beautiful ornaments and the windows are nice uh, the houses are standing up right right so it's not like they're leaning to the side or anything uh, so it's pretty it's a pretty well put together street even though it's you know pretty again not in the in the in any of the big cities so you can see it's right here, Radniki, somewhere. So, not in the Moskva or Nizhny Novgorod. All right. Next. Oh, that's it. All right. So, okay. 11,000 points. All right. I did it. it is, it's not that bad. Uh, I think this is my personal record. So, let's play the same map again. Can I now do the challenge? Okay. I think I can do the challenge now. As you can see this, oh, this is me. I guess. See, I played 40 minutes ago before doing this. I got a thousand, 50 minutes, oops, 50 minutes ago, I got 9,000. So this is my, my, my personal, personal uh, record. Congrats, Fedor. Well done. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to read just a couple of uh, people say it's interesting. Okay, so what, what we're going to do now is I will send you all. A link to a challenge so we can do it all together okay so challenge in the vat friends let me i'm not sure if you guys can i've never done this before so please let me know if you can all right play uh with me so it should be in the description now so please go in the description and see if you can play uh, let me actually, let me actually start it, and you guys can join in. Okay, all right. I already have some clues about this one. Okay, let me not go too far. Okay, all right. So please let me know in the chat if you can play it, if you can start it as well. If not, then uh, I'll, I'll change things up. Let me know if you guys can do it. Christopher Kersin said, I, my guess it's it's somewhere in Russia. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a pretty good way for me as a, as a Russian, you know, native. I can 
kind of see if I understand Russia well and then also share some things with you. So we're going to look at at this. Um, okay, for any, for any uh, Francesca, I know nothing about places in Russia, but I'll still play. Please let me know if you can play. Uh, give me a thumbs up or say yes, I can play so I can I can know and uh, and, and then get started. And then we're going to do link. So the link is in the description. It should be something play with me. Uh, and then there's a geoguesser.com challenge and then there's a link. It's, in, a, it's in, a, in the description. Let me actually post it in the chat as well so you guys can maybe do it that way. I just posted it in the chat so you all can probably do it like that. Okay, meanwhile, let me just switch to myself. So what we're going to do we're gonna play maybe like two times, and then you guys can uh, can play along as well. And then tell something about about Rostov. Спасибо. Actually, what day am I Okay, so maybe another minute, and then we're gonna start. So you guys can join in and stuff. So yeah, let me see if I can see it on there. Uh, is there any way that I can see this? I'm going games activities. My mouse friends. Okay, maybe not. All right. Okay. And then, so we're going to play a couple of times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play around. And then I'll do most, like, commentary of the places and certain things and certain things around it. Okay? All right. Uh, okay. All right. So let, let's get going. Let me switch back to the browser. So, uh, this one right here. As you can see, some <laughs> the lady walking down. Not the most um, populated town, but what gave it away to me when I first clicked on it is that this church right there. So this is a, a, a not a Christian church, which is pretty common in Russia. So this gives me a way that it's somewhere uh, near Kazan. It's somewhere right here. So I'm not gonna do a lot of searching, so this church is giving me, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna, again, I think it's a Muslim church. I'm very ignorant to this stuff, but this is what I know. And uh, and typically there's a lot of uh, Tatar people from uh, Tatarstan, which is Kazan mostly. So I'm gonna just guess with somewhere, like right here somewhere. Okay, all right, not that far. Okay, so this is the leader. Oh, right here is, is some other person who did it. Okay, next round. So I'm um, not that far. It was somewhere under Chelyabinsk. Okay, not, not bad. Next round. Oh, big, big town. Big town. <laughs> so this is a pretty common thing. I'm going to then, of course, go and look at the signs and stuff. But this is a pretty common thing. So as you can see, uh, there's construction going on behind. And people just simply write their numbers. So this is Padriat, it's some like uh, building stuff and, and other things. And then Ipacheca, this is uh, mortgages, like cheap mortgage. And you can call a taxi right here, taxi. Okay, so uh, yeah. But this is, as you can see, wide roads, pretty spacious, I should say. Uh, it's a pretty spacious town. Seems like this town was built when the road was built. So this is, I would say, a pretty new town from what I can, I can tell, because these things, uh, like these screens right here that, that, that separate, I think the pedestrian walk from the road are, maybe not. Yeah, I think so. They're typically built under bigger interstates. So this town is built around the road, not the other way around. Not like the road was built, then the town was built. So I would say this is either somewhere in the, in the east, somewhere near Vladivostok. Um, yeah, that would be my, my biggest guess. Yes. So let me see. Okay. Is there any city name? Krasnoyar oh, is, is it in Krasnoyarsk? No. Oh, this is Krasnoyarsk Cirque. So Krasnoyarsk Circus. But this doesn't have to be in Krasnoyarsk. They might just have a like a tour or whatever. This doesn't even give me. Okay. Doesn't even give me any towns, any city names. these signs but yeah this is somewhere huh yeah i'm looking at the signs and it's all food 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 signs 
again the cars are pretty pretty expensive well they're they're foreign cars but a lot of them uh, these are subaru is from yeah i think it's, it's somewhere in the east oh, that'd be my my biggest because see how spacious this is yeah i'll, I'll just i'm not gonna look at the signs anymore because i can find nothing i'm gonna just go somewhere in the east somewhere in chilevinsk oh sorry in vladivostok um Habarovsk. Hmm. Okay, somewhere, somewhere right here. No! Oh, wait. It wasn't Krasnoyarsk. Okay. But that was interesting because when I, I've been to Krasnoyarsk and somebody even guessed Krasnoyarsk because they just saw the uh, <laughs> the sign Krasnoyarsk. It's it. Well, well done. Okay. I just I couldn't believe that it was Krasnoyarsk because of the circus thing because they might have just been touring. And what a, what a, like, if you're in Krasnoyarsk, would you be excited to go to Krasnoyarsk Circus as if, if they're traveling? I don't know. Well, I just didn't believe that. And it was pretty good. I think that I've never seen Krasnoyarsk like that, Krasnoyarsk. Well, actually, now thinking about it, Krasnoyarsk had pretty big roads when I was there. I've been there when I was playing tennis, so I just didn't believe it. Okay. Too bad. All right. Next up middle of nowhere but this again is somewhere between a developed city and another developed city two lanes one way two lanes the other way is a pretty rare thing um this for some reason this doesn't give me any siberia vibes first of all we don't have these roads second of all as you can see another road going down this way to some local villages some some pine trees huh let's look at the cars and see maybe expensive cars i would say somewhere under moscow moscow going to some other place maybe yeah let's go down that way maybe see if the car how how why are we always next to this car right here i want to go back that way and there there it is again i guess the chat was with us Okay, I would say someone near Moscow. How about that? It's going from Nizhny Novgorod to Moscow, right here. Okay, we were not that far apart. Oh, it's near Ufa. Okay, again, another big town going to a big town. We were not that far. Okay, whoever this is. All right, next round. Okay, middle of nowhere. Seventy kilometers per hour. A guy walking. Where is he? I can I catch up to him every time? Oh, he is a Google Maps worker probably. That like he's going away. No, 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 no. He's not. He's a bike. He's biking from one place to another. So this is. But again, this is not. What road goes from uh, one town to another through the forest, though? Why would that be? Somewhere in Russia, maybe it's, oh, so in Russia, of course, maybe somewhere in Siberia, but it doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Let me go down the road a little bit. Maybe we can find something that's not trees. Okay. Some agricultural stuff. Okay. Don't see a lot of signs still. This looks like somewhere in the States. Oh, there it is. Chelyabinsk. Okay. We have... No, it's not Chelyabinsk. Chernyakhovsk, Sovetsk, Nesterov. Oh, this is a big road right here coming up. Can I get to the sign? Get to the sign. Get to the sign. Someone in Nesterov. Kali... What? Oh, see, now it's blocking it out for me. Okay. I guess it's a big giveaway then. Nesterov. I have no idea where the city Nesterov is. But... I have I have, this one. I have no idea whatsoever. Big road again. Let's put somewhere near the... Mm, right here. It was far. It was in Kaliningrad. So I guess I did see Kaliningrad, but then just block it out for me. Some somebody was 
Okay, maybe just looking them up. I see, I see, I see how it is. You probably just looked this town up. You saw on 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 the sign. You looked it up. I see. You're cheating. All right. How can you get five thousand points? Ooh. So these are pretty common. So as, as you can see, this little village is just formed around this this road from one place to another. So this is pretty common when you see this kind of a thing. You see a road, and then it's just one row of of houses right along the road. I would guess as this guy is selling stuff probably oh no he's just on the swings swinging <laughs> swinging away okay okay um i have no idea where this is but it looks like it's pretty um this gives me a lot of siberia vibes actually pedestrian walk with marked and everything Th these guys are painting their car white took all the lights off as you can see Okay, let me try to estimate kind of the well-being of this little town by what they're doing. They're pumping water. This tells me that it's not anywhere near the central central Russia. This truly gives me some Siberia kind of vibes. Again, cars are okay, but not too fancy, but not at the same time too too cheap either. A little family with a kid. Chevy. I'm gonna still go with my gut feeling and say that it's somewhere. Um, hmm. Let me look around a little more. Okay, somewhere near Tomsk. Let's see right here. Okay, not too far. To me, still kind of Siberia, on the verge of Siberia. Somebody got. See, no signs. You get 400 points. That's right. Yeah, I was thinking maybe that's Michael guy. Uh, so yeah, uh, that what gave it away to me a little bit, gave me a, a hint. Okay, let's view summary. Show high score. No! Nick Slobodian, you are a cheater. Okay, right here. There's no way that you can guess this. How can you guess this? So close. You looked it up. I understand. Right here. Two. Oh no, this is not it. So, see, you were, you were far right here. That's what it was. You just looked at Krasnoyarsk. But I guess I could have I could have guessed that too. Okay, Nick. Well done. So, that's good. That's good. See, I'm number six out of all of you guys. So, I guess uh, <laughs> it's either you know Russia better than me or I just suck. All right? Okay. So... Let me see if uh, if 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 the winner is here. There it is Nick. I actually just saw the sign for the first one. Yes, Nick. I see. He's in the chat, by the way. If you guys want to see it, um, well done. You second guess yourself. Yes, I second guess myself on a couple of things. Play a US map. Okay. How about this? Yes, this is actually pretty good. All right. Let me let me go and play play US map. Um, I've traveled around the US, and I think in the US, what's what's easier about the US? Is that all of the <clears throat> all of the states are very distinct or very unique, right? So you can kind of see a lot of um, clues here and there. But okay, let's play let's play um, U.S. map and see how I do. Well, frankly, you know, um, I'm just 23 years old, and last six six years I've lived for the majority of the year of each year in the states because I went to school here, and so. Yeah, I can. Uh, I've been to a lot of states. Let me see what I've been to. I've been to um, all this, all of this. Alabama drove drove through it, so kind of like that. Kind of, kind of right here on the east coast, pretty much to all the states, besides the 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 northern ones. Haven't been there, and we drove from Atlanta to uh, New Orleans, then to Houston, Dallas, to El Paso, through Arizona, Las Vegas, and then to LA, been to San Francisco too. So kind of like I've been to kind of this area. So all these states will, will be a challenge for me. Okay, let's go for the US, United States. Let's do a challenge as well. Well, this this time I'm, I'm not gonna even front. If you, if, you, if you do better than me, I'm not gonna even be upset. Okay. Okay, Becky Jin says you're a baby still. Yes, <laughs> I guess I am. Okay, 
have been to Canada, have been to Canada or the UK, been to Canada only to Vancouver. Um, kind of saw Toronto from the Niagara Falls, but only saw it. So yeah, um, ha haven't been to the UK. Unfortunately, want to go there. All right, so let's do this. I just sent the link to you guys in the chat, and then I also put it in the description so you can see. And then I'm um, gonna give it maybe like another minute for you guys to join. And meanwhile, let me just post it on on our Instagram so people can join us both from Instagram maybe. But I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a second to connect. Let's not go to the US. I'm waiting to go to the Russia, Vladivostok, where my wife is from. Uh, and then uh, somebody asked, Do you live in the States? Yes, I live in the States now. But only one time, go, go to the US map, and then we're going to, of course, go back to Russia. Because this is uh, be fluent in Russian, not be fluent in English, right? Okay, let me just record this real quick. Hey guys, we are doing live a live stream on YouTube. As you can see, chat is going right here. What we're doing is we are guessing a location with this Gale guesser uh, where it is on the map. We just did a Russian map, about to do a US map and see if I understand US well. But then, of course, we're going to switch back to Russia because this is a Be Flint in Russian channel. So, yeah, join us now. It's on YouTube. Uh, Be Flint in Russian. See you there. Hey, guys. Okay. All right. So, let's do this. I hope it gave you guys enough time. Okay. Let's actually, before I start, just somebody um, somebody say ready so I can know that you guys are ready. And uh, yeah, go at it. Hope you guys are having fun. Ready. Okay. You went to school in VA, I think. Good Southern accent. Dropping all those G's. From the ing's yeah i went to the school in the va yes <laughs> i went to, the, uh, to school at, at hampton university okay let's start this game all right a pretty typical again a couple of um well-groomed stuff um no idea what this is. This is reminds me of some, again, southern stuff. Uh, some VA kind of driving toward uh, Philly. Bagwell. Nothing really. Pickup trucks. Greenery. Uh, I'm just going to go with my gut feeling and go with, with VA driving to... I kind of want to say it's like somewhere here, going to Delaware, but then it's hmm, one one way, one lane, one way, one lane, one lane each way. Speed limit seventy. I haven't encountered speed limit seventy when I was driving. Hmm, kind of gives me some doubts. Let me see the signs. What does it say? Clarksville. I have no idea what those towns are. So it's not going to be in some way VA. Okay. I'm not going to look this up. I'm not going to cheat. Okay. I okay let, how about this? We're going to go just with somewhere right here. I don't even know. Okay. Very far. Near Dallas. Okay. Somebody saw the sign. I'm pretty sure, right? Did you see the sign? No. Okay, yeah, well, it's kind of green still. So I guess I have a wrong idea of what uh, Dallas is like. All right, next round. If I embarrass myself, okay, some desert stuff. Desert mountains, somewhere in Arizona or something. No, not in Arizona. Maybe it is. See, this is pretty interesting. What I like about the states, well, not like, but something very cool. If you look at this, this area right here, it's green. So to turn right here, it's all not green. Right here is not green or less green. Maybe just the camera angle. Yeah, kind of 
Okay, I'm gonna just go with, uh, like I said, my gut feeling. I would say, mm, <laughs> not here. I don't wanna, it's still kind of greenish. Albuquerque. I only can guess what I know. So I'm gonna go with, eh, let's go with here. Hey, not that far! Near El Paso. Oh, no, not, not near El Paso. I guess near El Paso. This, this was in... Uh, what is this? is this? Is there a city nearby? Like a big one? Utah. Albuquerque. Yes, that's Albuquerque. Okay. Not that bad. Not that bad. Uh, Interstate 11. Uh, going over some lake or some rivers. Is this, uh, I, I haven't, mm. so Interstate 11, that's what I know. I just want to see some other, there's a sign right there. Why didn't they block the sign in another one and they blocked the sign in Russia? Okay, Nanty Coke. Okay, no idea, zero idea. Kind of some hills, some more hills. Right there, some mountains. Some rivers. <laughs> this is my uh, understanding of, of the states. Uh, rivers, mountains, road. <laughs> but I would say is uh, uh, Mississippi River. And it's going to the hills. No. Can it be that? Can it be somewhere here? Not that many cars. Not that many cars whatsoever. Is there any river that goes here? No, right? This is probably Mississippi, right? Missouri River. It's Missouri. This is Mississippi, right? A river? Yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> right here. I don't even know. Interstate 11, I can Google that, but I'm not going to. Oh my gosh, is this Philly? Or near Philly? Oh, past New York. What's the river then? Oh, I guess I gave it too much of a... Somebody is just way too close. How are you this close to the actual... Maybe you live there. Well, why am I surprised that you're close to that, you know? If you're in America, probably know America pretty well. Now, now, how am I supposed to guess this? Okay, well, first of all, forest, greenery. Forest, forest, forest. Some hills again. I guess last time I thought it was hills, and then I guessed completely wrong. All right. Zero idea. Zero. Less than zero. <laughs> OMG. Some barns. <sighs> well, first of all, let's put it this way. It's not anywhere here. So somewhere here. This is the random thing. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan, Chicago. I don't think it's in the south either with the greenery and stuff. Uh, right here. Just a random guess. Oh my gosh! I was thinking, you know, how much why am I so confident in saying that it's not here if I don't even know what this looks like? Okay, all right. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> all right, next round. Last one. <laughs> Again. Give me anything. Anything. This is a pretty neat house. Would you want to live in that one? Imagine just, just driving down the road. And then you see this pretty small house. It's pretty cool. Some boats. Oh, there's a boat? Is that a boat? I think it is. So somewhere near the boats. Near near the lakes or something. 
American flag, which doesn't really <laughs> tell me much, right? I'm guessing location in the in America. Okay, zero idea. But I would say my gut feeling tells me, which has not been working for me that well, it tells me that it's somewhere not in Florida. Though it might be ah right here. Okay, somewhere near St. Louis. Okay, that's it. <laughs> my I've earned six thousand points. All right, it was very far. This few high scores, twenty thousand points. Air conditioner. Well done, air conditioner. You did well. This one right here. How how are you so close? You're two miles away from this. How? Did you look it up? Wait, there was a location near airport? Which one was that? This was near the airport? Where is the airport? It's two miles from the airport. What in the world? All right. Well, that's it for for another uh, challenge. Let me see. Let me read the comments. Um, okay. Mississippi River, Dakota. What in the state? No, it's closest. No, where is the closest store? <laughs> Russell Randall. Yeah. On some boat. Somebody even knows. Becky, you, you even know what kind of boat it is. Okay. Hi, Fedor. Hey, Katusha Ivanov. Another guy requests to go Gopnik Villages. See? This is... Um, what's the name of the game? Uh, it's in the, in, in the description. And then I, I keep sending you guys the challenges. Okay, let me now go back to Russia. I don't choose the actual uh, places. And when I go to Russia, that's all I choose. Russia, right here. As you can see, it's, it's just that. So, challenge. Let me see. Is there any? Oh, so only time limit. Okay, I'm not gonna put any any limits. Invite friends. So we're gonna do another Russian, just pure playing. I'm I'm gonna explain. Can you pull off Gopnik style, um, Eric? Um, Eric Thompson. So funny thing is that people who live or who are born in the so I'm from Novosibirsk. To put it on the map. Okay, if I can go right here. Um, I'm from Novosibirsk. So this is Novosibirsk. So as you can see, it's in the middle of Russia. It's actually believed to be right in the middle of Russia. But how can it be like in the center of Russia? But how can it be in the center uh, vertically on the y-axis if it's right by Mongolia? This was always kind of surprising to me. But it's believed to be right in the middle of Russia. But then again, how can it be when it's all this area? Right? So how can now if we measure is there a ruler here? No, right? No. So as you can see from here to here and from here to here, it's not the same distance. It doesn't even fit the screen. But it's believed to be the Novosibirsk is the center of Russia. So it's 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 in Siberia. Anyway, Novosibirsk has different rayon. Rayon is like region district. Uh, and I'm from, where is this? I'm from right here, Pervamaiske Rayon. So this believed to be, maybe in the 90s, to be a gangster region where a lot of Gopniks are. And there used to be like, you know, uh, rough guys there. Uh, I don't know why exactly that was the case, but it's just, it's just that. And then I think with kind of my generation, it went away because when I was still in school, we we heard a lot a lot about like a previous generation, like people who are maybe ten years older than us. They would fight like group on group, like thirty to thirty people just go at it over some conflict. Uh, sometimes there would be I, I I witnessed a couple of those. I was a part of a couple of those. Never got to the fighting uh, of it. We kind of resolved it, you know, just talking. But and I wasn't the guy who who who, who was in trouble or anything. But there were guys conflict. So one guy has his friends, and says, "Hey, this guy is trying to fight me. Come with me." And it'd be like a group of thirty to thirty. And I saw a couple of them. And the story behind it was that one guy had a girl, and the other guy was trying to steal that girl. 
And so the group of people fighting 30 to 30, maybe 20 to 20, I'm not sure, but I think it's 30, sometimes even more, just going at it. And uh, those were people who maybe like five years older than me, 10 years older than me. In our time, that never happened. Big fights, actual bloody fights never happened. But I think it's with my kind of uh, age people, it went away. I don't know why, but it just I don't hear about that about that kind of uh, uh, fighting or gopniks going around like that anymore. And uh, now my region, the Piramayski Rayon, which is the which is this, which is this right here, uh, is getting. What, I think that there's a term, uh, reg gentrified, reg whatever the term is, is getting better. Meaning that there's a lot of better schools there, housing, all that stuff. So it's getting better. Just as a side note. Okay. Did I send you guys the challenge? I might have not sent it. Oh, okay. Do you like Novosibirsk? Somebody's asking. Um, yes, I love Novosibirsk. It's gentrified. Yes, okay. I love Novosibirsk. Um, if I were to live in Russia, that, that, that would be the place I would live in. Because, I mean, of course, it's, it's just my family there. Family, friends. And Novosibirsk is getting better. It's getting gentrified. And um, a, lot of, a, a lot better, you know, bars and restaurants. People are pretty nice there as well. It's not that populated with tourists. But there's enough tourists there to accommodate to have things to accommodate them like english speaking bars there is a bar i think it's called friends bar that people who work there like you know the waiters and stuff they are they have to speak english for them to work there good conversational english so it's a lot of those things that are happening now in the city which is awesome for 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 people who want to travel but you know if you look on the map again uh, let me see now sibirsk is very far from Moscow. Of course, if you travel, go to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Those are the two cities that are the most beautiful, the most history there, the most culture there, and they're the most equipped for, for foreigners. Uh, all metro stations in both cities, I believe, uh, have English translations, so and English announcers and stuff, so you won't be lost there. Sometimes, even in, in, in Moscow, I believe there's even Chinese language uh, directions, navigation, because uh, there's a lot of Chinese uh, tourists there. So, yeah, if you go to Russia, if it's the first time, go to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Of course, in Novosibirsk, it's also awesome. But there is places like Kazan. It's not that far from, from Moscow, as you can see, it's right here. And it's also unique in, uh, in its culture because people live differently there. And they have a different cultural, uh, different religion for the most part, I think. Again, I don't want to sound uh, ignorant. If, if if it's not the case, I apologize. But that's what my kind of perspective of it is. Of course, the Novosibirsk is great. Siberia is cool. I think if you go to Siberia, go to Novosibirsk. Um, and then, of course, Vladivostok is a whole other area, which is also pretty unique. But again, are you going to travel from Moscow to Novosibirsk for our flight. Novosibirsk to Vladivostok also for our flight. Are you going to do that? Most likely not. So I would say go to Moscow and St. Petersburg. All right. So again, let's get started. I think you guys had enough time for you to join this uh, th this challenge. Okay. Let me also put it in the description. Uh, Pam. Okay. Um, I think Kazan is 50-50 Tatar and Slavic. Maybe. I don't know any percentages of that. And yeah, what about Moscow? Moscow is great for foreigners, especially. Uh, Adora Bezel, Sochi, that's where I'm at. Sochi, yes, yeah, Sochi, another one uh, that I missed. Uh, Sochi, which is right here, right here. So it's on the shore. So it's 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 a it's a resort. Uh, people go there in the in, in the in the summer. It's awesome. Uh, Sochi to upset, as you can see, they're getting jig. They're all right here. Um, if you um, don't care about politics like that and don't have a stance about Crimea, Crimea is good now. I think this is, is this Crimea? I believe so. Yes, I think this is Crimea right here. Again, don't don't quote me. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty ashamed of my ignorance sometimes, guys. Seriously, this is sometimes I'd be thinking that I should know this, but sometimes I don't. Um, so people go there now a lot, especially during the lockdown. You cannot travel like that, so people go there a lot. So yeah, uh, if you if you can, 
go to Sochi, it's also pretty good. And Crimea, again, at your own kind of um, um, make, your own de- make your own decision. All right, so join right now. Link is in the chat. Let me repost it right now. Join this uh, and, and, and trying to guess. Okay. Uh, Brian Termulo says, been to Vladivostok, but studies uh, Russian in Ufa. It's also a good city. Yes, Ufa is also a very well-developed city. Because there, you know, the closer you get to Moscow, it's going to be more um, more and more developed, especially in central Russia. Siberia is kind of like its own region as well. All right, let's get started with the game. Okay, let's get going. One last time, we're going to play for the high score. And then another time we're going to play this. I'm not going to... My goal is not going to be to really do do this high score, but to explain certain things, show some cultural things here and there. So, yeah. Once again, we're right off the top. Uh, good road. Even as you can see, going to this side, I would say somewhere near central Russia. That's what I would say. Uh, okay, let me see this sign right here. Typically it says the, the city name. Oops. Aftercom Shakman Fedorovka. Oh, it's right here. Fedorovka. You can, you can kind of see this. And of course, my name is Fedor, so it's uh, uh, Fedorovka as well. All right, let me see. Severny Rudnik. Okay, so Rudnik is like a, a mine. So maybe it's somewhere where the mining is, somewhere near Ural, Surgut, maybe like that. Uh, this guy is taking some stuff. I cannot catch up to him. Look, let me. Let me, let me catch up to you. Yes, Severny Rudnik. So, so northern mine. Uh, as you can see, the houses are uh, almost destroyed. So abandoned houses here. It shows you that this town is not that prosperous. <laughs> and most likely, this is just a place to go from one place to the next. And I guess um, this is the city. Can I go there? Can I go there? No. All right. So I would say it's somewhere near Surgut area, Nizhnevartovsk. Hmm. That's what I would guess because of the mining stuff. But it can also be somewhere near Tumen. Hmm. So this is like where the mining stuff happens a lot. Okay. All right, let's go in the middle right here. Oh no! Is in Voronezh? Maybe it's just some, uh, not like a mine, uh, like the fossil. Mine. I don't know. Guess wrong. Not gonna. Okay. Again, from the first time we saw this, see the houses are small, but they're well put together, right? As you can see, there's like fencing, flowers. People really take care of their stuff, and that's a sign of a pretty well-developed village uh, this is a village a road that's going f- it's not a big road maybe it's some off-road but the fact that people on google went there it's probably from a city to a city as you can see we've been pretty much o- only on the roads good houses again not big some babushka walking around and then like these right here is the typical russian kind of house when you see that it's like these these um, frames. If you see this frame, it's somewhere in the, in, the, in in Russia or post USSR kind of years. Okay, no signs here. Uh, again, another small but well put together house. This one right here. So somewhere in central Russia. Okay, not really. Not not many other clues here. Not that many mountains in the back. So again, is there any signs? Any any lack of a sign? Any any sign? Any, any sign of a sign? <laughs> okay. One moment. Okay. All right. Let me just uh, give my guess. I would say it's maybe again somewhere near Varonish. Ario, no, not Ario. Um. Hmm. I mean, right here. Okay. Rostov na Danu. Pretty good. Not that far again. Again, Central Russia. I was right. But dang, it's pretty close to Ukraine. Right next to next to Donetsk. Hmm. All right. 
Now this right here is where there's no clues whatsoever. Dirt road. Nothing going on. Some five houses. A puddle in the road. <laughs> that's that's the biggest clue is the puddle. It means that it's rained there recently. Okay, there's a sign. There's a hope. Kalininskaya. Kalininskaya can be in any region. Kalininskaya is like a very generic name. Forest. This can be anywhere. This just tells me that if it's anywhere, it's not near a developed city. It's not near so it's not going to be in central Russia. Hmm, what about the mountains and stuff? Nothing. So I'm going to just... I have no idea. Uh, right here. Right here somewhere. I don't even know. Okay, it's near Chelyabinsk. So, okay, I guess I just like took a small village. See, like when it's just somewhere... <laughs> Right here, Kalinovsky. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere can be really anywhere. I guess somebody guessed. Yes, if it wasn't somewhere there, uh, especially near Europe, you would see a lot, a lot better towns, even if they're small villages. So yeah, I earned so, the leader got four hundred. Okay, <laughs> okay. So okay, some garages going on. This can be again anywhere. Garages going down. This, this is how garages look in Russia. Uh, so if you live in one of these, it might be that in the past USSR years, you were given, if you live in an apartment, you were given a garage. I, I, I mean, obviously, you cannot build, you can't build, I guess, a garage complex under the apartments, but it's not typically uh, an easy thing. So they just build it somewhere off these things. So my grandpa... He used to always he they always lived in an apartment from from what I remember, and they always used to just um, go to come home, then drive to the garage, park their car in the garage, and then go back home. Like walk back, maybe like a fifteen minute walk. Okay, um, what can I t what can I say? Not a well populated uh, thing. Car what was this Is it Audi Audi okay. So again, it, it, this can be anywhere. This can be anywhere. These style Khrushchev keys, this can be anywhere. Um, some, what is this? Is this uh, electricity? Some some farm going on right here. Throw, oh, is there a city in here? Mm -mm, no city. No city mention. Okay, let's look in the back. Cars are looking nice. Cars are all imported cars. A Russian car right here. So when you see a, if it's a Russian car, they're probably a cheaper. It kind of kind of gives you the clue of what kind of a uh, town it is. Rostelecom. Rostelecom is a Russian like think of it as like AT and T in the states. This is a small village. I don't even know. Small town. Doesn't give me Central Russia vibes. At least, unless it's some small town somewhere here. At the same time, I kind of want to go toward here a little bit, off to the right, off to Europe and Ural. Kind of. Let's let's go with Kurgan. Oh my gosh! It's in Smolensk. Okay, what well, Smolensk? My bad. <laughs> it's somewhere actually very close to Smolensk. It's so this is how Smolensk looks like. Like right as you can, as you can see, Smolensk right here. And this is their just region. It's actually Smolensk town. Interesting. Well, I've earned more than the leader of this uh, round anyway. Good. Now, <laughs> now before I said that there was nothing that I could guess off of, but this is true. Well, actually, no, there's not. It's not nothing. First of all, let's put it this way: the road is nice. The road is nice. Um, in the forest. Now. As you can see, road uh, this way, back this way, and then they also chop down the trees on the sides. So it's a potential that they will expand this road. It's a potential. Potential. If I go down, 
Is there any towns, any cities? Cars, what are cars like? Volkswagen. This is not a typical Central Russia. I would say Central Russia. Yes, especially with these lanes, um, merging lanes. It kind of, it, so it tells you that it's a lot of traffic going uh, perpendicular to each other. So, especially, yes, this also has a merging lane, merging lane this way, merging lane that way. Mezga sounds familiar, actually. Can this be a road to Barnaul or to Altai from Novosibirsk area? Can it be? Or is it? Let's go down a couple of more. One, two, let's go three further out. Mm -mm. Ah, Central Russia. I think it's Central Russia somewhere again. Let's go with Lipetsk Tambov somewhere. Is this an interstate that goes from one city to another? I would say yes. Is it big enough? Like we saw previously going to Nizhny Novgorod. No. So maybe it's going from Nizhny Novgorod off to right here somewhere. So somewhere here. Let's see right here. Not that far. Hey, look. Oh, so it's, it's, it's a mask going up. Okay, Miss Guy. Yep. All right. Okay. That's it. Let me see. Please tell me I won. No, air conditioner. Stop cheating. Oh, no, it's not even uh, air conditioner. It's Venice. Venice, well done. Your best one was... This gave you the most points. Smolensk. You looked it up. Ain't no way. There's no way. You saw a sign. You looked it up. There's no way. Well, uh, that's it for the challenges. Well done, guys. I hope this is interesting to you. And, uh, yeah, just give me a quick moment. Uh, all right. Okay. So now that what we're going to do now. Let me actually read the chat before I, I say it. Um, okay. Potato and cabbage farm, somebody says. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not too well versed in that. It was fun, Becky. Okay. Well, we're not done yet. Not done yet. Where's the nearest gas station? See, that's what I was looking for. Uh, I was looking for like gas stations and things like that because sometimes, in the name of the gas station, sometimes it gives away the region. All right, so now we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do one last round. But in this time, this time I'm not going to be uh, guessing anything. That's not gonna be my my best. Um, Guess in the area. However, it's going to be more educational. So now it's going to be more culture. So put uh, tune in, if especially if you want to travel to Russia one day. Th these cultural points here and there will will give it away. So, all right. So let's do it again. Uh, how do I go back to? Okay, I guess I'm going to just go back like that. Uh, Russia. I mean. Let's do single player. It's okay. In fact, eh, yeah, it's fine. All right. So, um, all right. Again, a road from one city to another. In Russia, the thing is, is that Russia um, was colonized, like this area. Can I enlarge this? Okay, yes. So, historically, Russia was like in this area right here, where now is central Russia. That's why it's sometimes more developed. It's kind of historically been there. Um, Russia has been colonized to go from here to here, from what I know, and right now I'm actually studying this as well, reading about this, uh, about history of Russia, about the very, you know, starts of Russia, and the fact, you know, that there was nobody in this area. Uh, no, uh, Siberia, there was pretty much nobody there. It's cold in the winter, so you have to be a well-developed civilization for you to survive that winter. So it was colonized, and a lot of the cities over here, you know, with the technology and stuff, things like roads were 
very small. Nobody thought that it was going to be cars and traffic. So it's, that's why it's a lot of traffic in older cities like Moscow. A lot of traffic because Moscow uh, was not built around roads. Roads were built within Moscow. So you in, in the confined kind of space. And so when you see these things, these, these two lanes going one way, one lane going, going the other. That means that there's heavy traffic going from one way to another. And especially with these lines. Back home, again, winter times, they, you know, that kind of change of temperature destroys the paint. It's very hard. It's, it's you know, different seasons. It's raining, it's snowing, and then that coldness and, and the hot and all that stuff destroys the paint. And so it's very rare to see this good painting. Well, now it's better. These days it's better. But when I was growing up, it was very hard to find a good painted, you know, kind of interstate going from one place to another. So seeing this is really... Uh, a sign that it's somewhere in a more developed uh, area. And then, uh, see a trash right there laying around underneath? And the trash can right there um, is pretty common, I would say. So, yeah. Well, common in these kind of circumstances where it's a lot of... Um, it's a lot less people living here. You can see there's no no stores, no nothing, no no towns. This is a sign, Zotoya Karamush. Zaliha. Okay, not, not nothing really major here. Okay, um, I'll say somewhere here. It's, um, again, this is not something that I'm gonna really be focused on guessing the actual place. More for culture. See, not that far. <laughs> Saratov. Okay, see again, big town, Volgograd, big town. Um, so yeah, next round. Uh, mountains, 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 mountains. This is okay. Mountains in Russia. Actually, right. This doesn't. This doesn't look like Altai. Maybe it is Altai. Uh, I think it's somewhere near ba Baikal. I would say it's somewhere. Uh, yeah, somewhere here. I would say. So, uh, Russia has a great greenery, great, great nature, and it's really. Uh, it's my dream to not only travel the world but also travel through Russia, into different areas, into different cities, different towns, different. Even, you know, like these, like the mountains and stuff. Where, where I live, again, oh no, where I live, now Sibirsk, we have Altai right here. Gorna Altaisk is a place where uh, we go. A lot of Siberian people go from Siberia. They go here because it's very fresh air. It's wonderful there. It's near Mongolia, so it's kind of going up in the mountains there. And that, you know, just pure bliss of of fresh air and greenery and just relaxation is awesome so uh, not not much not much to add here um about this particular place okay this nissan x trail will go with us for the rest of this thing um it's pretty common when you are in the mountains to be driving with nothing around as you can see there's nothing around. Just the uh, mountains and mountains and mountains. And it can go for like 20 kilometers, 15 miles roughly. Uh, so yeah, I would say it's, it doesn't look like uh, Altai. Because there's more things along the road. So I would say it's somewhere uh, right here. No! It was, it was Altai! I showed you guys. Oh no! So it was all that. Okay. What? Well, oh, that's why. So as you can see, I didn't think it was Altai for one reason and one reason alone because we travel to Gornaltai. That's that's it. We stop right here. When I never went past that, so it's past it. I just didn't uh, recognize it uh, because of um, where was it? Um. Where, where where I where we go, you rarely see this long of a road along the mountains. It's pretty much like you're going up and up and up and up and up slowly, and then you see the mountains maybe like two miles, and you and you reach your destination. That's why I didn't recognize this. Okay, next. Again, rare occasion where you will see two lanes one way, two lanes the other way back home. In the states, I was. Uh, surprised to see this when we were you know I was in I lived in, in Virginia 
and we traveled a lot just drove to dc to philly to new york and stuff and all this all this road going right here right here right here right here it's all two lanes one way two lanes the other way with like a you know pretty huge thing like of trees in the middle so there's no kind of colliding so when uh we're driving on these at pretty high speed you know this is pretty dangerous uh, but I, I like to see that there is two two lanes one way two lanes the other kind of gives you more safety and just you know m much more relaxed kind of a thing we traveled uh this this winter we traveled to again altai to sheregyes which is like like a um, ski resort and i was driving as well and whenever there is one lane one way one lane the other imagine if there's a truck you have to go around it and sometimes you don't see far enough on the on the you know opposing traffic lane that it's pretty risky when you go when trying to get get over get uh, in front of the truck you have to really be be cautious and careful so when you go from one city to another you cannot be tired you cannot be well of course you cannot be drunk in any case when you're driving but you cannot be not attentive and it's pretty pretty um nerve testing you know it's pretty stressful to do that so yeah but these again two lanes one way two lanes the other pretty heavy traffic as you can see right there on both lanes somewhere in central russia i would say going from moscow to right here close going from moscow to st petersburg almost close enough as you can see this is not even the main street the main road going to st petersburg it's like so this is m11 this is the main one so pretty cool oh my gosh oh okay this is very interesting so as we look here beautiful villa beautiful house be beautiful home uh very nice nicely done uh there's even a guest house or security house right here turn around first of all there's nothing there number one and then there is this house right here. Somebody lives right here, right next to it. Uh, as you can see, so let, uh, I'm gonna talk about, I'm not gonna talk about this. This is definitely somebody from the, who's making a lot of money, who came in this small town or small village to kind of have their summer house here or whatever. Uh, yeah, nothing, not much going on around. As you can see, the old house is like this. So uh, this kind of gives me Siberia vibes for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so, <laughs> the street sign is on the tree right here. <laughs> That's interesting. Let me talk about, about first of all, this. When you have log, right? When you have just chopped down trees in front of the house. Typically, of course, you put it in the back. You you take one of these, you know, um, tree, what, what, what was it, stems? No. Anyway, you take this tree, you go in the back, you chop it up with an axe, you go pam, pam, pam. Of course, for a lot of my European and American people, this is unheard of, but I did it. You know, a lot of my friends did it who lived in their own house. Of course, this is like in the middle of, oh, there's some some honeybees right there. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So in these kind of towns, people are forced to just live off of what they have, right? If you don't have, um, I'm not sure exactly where this is, but if this is like the only village kind of a place where people live year-round then you do have to do those things you do have to you know, produce honey to maybe sell it on the on the market somewhere make some money buy some meat and stuff like that okay so when you have this this just gives you uh, a clue that this house if if it is in fact year-round house which doesn't look like it actually it doesn't look like it it doesn't have a covered garage for the winter if your car is outside it can get snowed in it's hard to really get to it and then secondly um you just may not start it if it's in the winter uh, so i think this is like a dacha dacha is like a summer house where you go for the summer so typically this house will not be that that well equipped for for the winter which this one doesn't look like it is uh, another clue that gives it away for me is that you have an open porch if this was a year-round house this porch would get snowed in every single day when it snows, gets snow, gets snowed in up to like an ankle, right? So yeah, I think this is a dacha. 
what, what tells me is that yeah probably it is and then especially back to the uh, wood in front of the house most likely this house is not gas um, heated so you do have to have a furnace and you do have to burn stuff in the furnace for the house to be warm. Sometimes, um, well, not nowadays, of course, you're gonna have pipes with with water. So when you put it in the furnace, the water gets hot, and you have the radiators around the house, so it gets warmed up from that. Back in the day, no piping system sometimes, and people just would get. It's typically a big room with the furnace right in the middle of it, and you burn the furnace and the heat from the furnace. That's all you have, right? So, yeah, sometimes people would even sleep. There's a cartoon. You can you could sleep on a furnace on top of it um, because it was warm, not too hot for you to get burnt, but warm enough for you to just get cozy in the winter. So, yeah, and then uh, you do have to do this. Uh, when we had a furnace, a furnace um, house, uh, we, my dad, we, of course, had coal, coal as well. So we would uh, order uh, wood. They would come to our house, we'd chop it up, put it in a pile, and then when they would have to put it in the furnace, we'd go get it. And then we also get coal, the black coals, right? B because they burn faster. And so my dad, for us not to get cold in the, at night, in the winter, he would wake up around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., go get coal, put it in the furnace, go back to sleep. Over the winter, over the years, five, six, seven years that, uh, well, not even five, maybe like more 15 years that I was alive. So two years before the, my brother was born, a couple of more years before that they lived in that house. So maybe like 20 years. He had to, had to do that for 20 years. He would have marks in his fingers, in the cracks of his fingers, just black from coal because you have to put it. He, of course, had gloves and things like that and, and mittens and stuff. But still, it just deep in your pores. And uh, when we got gas, uh, gas heating system, you don't have to do that anymore. You just turn it on, and that's it. Gas burns, and it warms up the, the, the water in the pipes, or if it's gas in the pipes, I'm not even sure. But he said in, in the matter of two months, those black spots went away. And he said, I, I, I now I sleep for like an hour more. So it's just like that. So... And now, um, still in the further out kind of areas, and I live in the big city. Novosibirsk is a, is a third largest city. And we just got it like 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. I was 12, I think. So like what, uh, 11 years ago, roughly. So yeah, and um, we live in a big city. Imagine what happens in even smaller cities. Of course, because we didn't live in the city center, like in the apartment complexes, the gas companies have to put the piping all the way to our area to give gas to our neighborhood. We, uh, my dad and, of course, the neighborhood that we lived in, they had talks among themselves to pitch in and go to the gas company so we can pay for the gas to come to us because it's just, you know, it's bad, especially for the environment. You know, you, you're burning coal, all these ashes flying around in the winter. Um, it was just, you know, if, if it didn't snow for a while, it would be a layer of ash on the snow. White snow, black ash, it's very easy to see. So you can see like a layer on top, not <laughs> pure black layer, but it's grayish, grayish kind of air um, layer. But as soon as gas came to our area in the winter, it just much more beautiful. White snow, awesome. All right, <laughs> kind of a long story. This can be anywhere. I'm going to go with uh, Siberia right here. I don't even know. Far. Oh, okay. That kind of uh, Dacia area can be really anywhere. So, yeah. Okay. Um, big city. Big city. As you can see, again, the road system is gives it away a lot. Hmm. Gives it away a lot. This again looks like either either Krasnoyarsk because that that was um, what Krasnoyarsk looked like when we did it. Uh, Mama is pikla. Mama made or Mama baked. So this is Mama Bakery. Sberbank uh, is a Russian bank. It used to be called Sberkassa uh, back in the USSR days, and now it just turned to Sberbank. It's um, 
Сбер is short for сберегательный, which is like a collecting or accumulating bank. Uh, so, yeah. Um, okay, let me talk. Let me just find something to talk about. They blacked out this, uh, this uh, bus stop, so I won't know where it is. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. Um, what can I what can I comment on? Um, okay, let me comment. Okay, I, I I see I see two things. Okay, let me comment on kiosks and this thing right there in the back. See this small thing right there? This thing right. Okay, let me just zoom in like that. All right. Oh, there's three things. Flowers. All right, three things. First, uh, this little thing. This little thing is kvas. They, typically in the summer, would bring out those things. See those like big, big barrel of stuff? It's like, a, I guess, think of it like a beer keg, but a huge one. As you can see, it has the, has the wheels. So the car drives it to this place, puts it down. Uh, I'm not sure how they get their authorization to do that. It's a whole different question, but they do. And so they put it down. A person behind, so you cannot see it here, but the person is behind somewhere in this area right here. If we were to take away this huge kiosk in the middle, person sitting right there. And they have a price list for the for the quantities, for the volumes of, of liquid, right? So it's either a cup, a big cup, a bottle, or a big bottle. So it's typically like, like this, like a half a liter. Is uh, A cup is like maybe two tenths of a liter so it's like a cup regular cup right like a coffee cup or whatever then there's a liter um a bigger cup so think of it as a beer cup big one then it's a liter and a half so it's like think of uh coke the big coke well, does a little more but around that number and then there's a big 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 bottle like three liters like a gallon so you come to them and they open up like a little valve and they pour it out to you like again like a, a like a keg of, of beer. Think of it like a like that. When you come to the bar, they open the thing and they pour the beer to the cup, right? Same thing here. They come out in the summer because I guess for the person to be sitting there all day, yeah, it has to be the summer. They have like a little umbrella from the sun and stuff. So yeah, they sit there and they pour it to you. They go away typically like around 8 p.m. or something. So they can catch a bus and go home. And overnight, they lock the wheels so you won't just roll it away of course they close the thing so you cannot pour anything uh, out of it as well and we used to get it almost every i would say every week we would drive past one of those on the, on the typical drive to work we would see three or four of these on the street so you can just pull over um, get some of that um kvass and kvass is something similar to the kombucha here in the states very similar style it's, it's also fermented stuff it's also a little bit alcoholic just like kombucha because it gets fermented and it has that sweet taste kombucha is more of like you know health all that stuff but it's that one is just think of it as like root beer but not take away the soda part of it the sugar part of it still a little sweet but not too sweet we used to get a lot, but then uh, all of a sudden, I think people just became aware that they sit there for a long time. So there's a lot of bacteria that, that gets inside of those things. So it became kind of less health uh, attractive. Now talking about this kiosk right here. Kiosks are all around Russia. So there's a bus stop right here. Uh, this right here as well. I think it's a bus stop too, right? Yeah, bus stop here, bus stop here. So it's a bus stop. Near it is a kiosk. Sometimes, let me see if there's kiosks here. Oh, there's some stores. If we go down, I'm pretty sure, if we go down one, like right here somewhere, a little more. No? Right here's a kiosk, for example, as well. So like it's, it's the next bus stop, pretty much. All right, uh, let me go back to our original place. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Bam. So kiosks. Uh, see this little window right here. This is where you open. You come there. If, if it's not open, you kind of knock. The person who is be behind in there opens it up, and you say, "Can I have 
this, this, and that. This looks like it's just magazines and some, some toys for the kids. Those differ. Sometimes you have a kiosk for, for shoe repair. That can happen as well. You won't see those typically on the bus stop, but somewhere maybe deeper in the, like a, uh, a community complex, whatever. Uh, shoe repairs. You can have flower shops like that, set up like that. You can have food stuff. We have a lot of food kiosks near bus stops. They typically have like fridges right here on the side. There's a fridge or something. And then um, um, there's a fridge right here, fridge right here with juice, with um, Coke, Sprite, Fanta, uh, all this, maybe like some energy drinks and stuff like that. They will sell inside like Snicker bars, candy bars, maybe some... Um, uh, buns or something like that, right? Just some, some snacks and food that you can buy. Sometimes they have cigarettes and alcohol, mostly beer. Sometimes they'll have some cheap wine or something. Sometimes they'll have more serious like vodka, maybe some cognac, some cheap um, liquor as well. You won't see like Hennessy there for sure. It's, of course, think about this. It's the main uh, customer customer base is those who travel by bus so they won't sell any expensive stuff there uh, when i would go i would always travel to my tennis practice from home to to tennis by bus by myself i would get on the bus and go and i will buy a lot of snicker bars and a lot of water if i'm on the way to practice i'll buy some water buy some ice cream also forget about that there'll be some ice cream kiosks as well um and lastly i would say um uh, we have i have two funny stories one is that there's here on uh, 24-7 kiosks. One by my house is, of course, a local people working there. So there's one lady who always work there every day, maybe every other day with one weekend. Maybe like two days work, one day off. Two days work, one day off or whatever. And so one time we were partying with my friends at my, at, at, at my house and we just wanted to buy something. I forget what it was. Let's say juice juice <laughs> right and so i uh, came up to it the of course the little window right here where you talk to them is closed of course because you know it's it's night what if somebody just comes and does whatever it's closed so i knock no response it's a 24 7 kiosk i knock again no response and then I look inside i see the lady just in her little chair kind of reclined and she's over there sleep like that <laughs> on the pillow goes, you know, sleeping. So I knock pretty heavily. She wakes up, pissed at me, of course, because I woke her up, right? <laughs> and then I ask her for some pity stuff, you know, can I get this juice? Can I get this chips or whatever? So yeah, <laughs> that happened once. Second story, when we were underage, underage drinking is bad. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't smoke underage, but we did it. I'm not ashamed of it, but we did it. And so our strategy, of course, if you go to a store, it's 18 plus. You cannot get any alcohol if you are at least don't look 18. You cannot get any alcohol. In kiosks, especially when I was about 15, 16, when I was uh, more like 14, 15, uh, in that age. I'm not saying that I bought it when I was that age, but but in that. So I would say what? nine years ago, nine to eight years ago, this was the case. They would get paid for their shift and some for their sales, some percentage of their sales. So they kind of didn't think twice about selling stuff to a person who looked kind of 18. And so we would go there. As you can see, it's a small window. It's a small window right here. They can almost not see you sometimes. So our tallest guys would come up to that little thing, go up to like right here, right? So nose up, maybe like right here, nose up, no eyes. They wouldn't see their eyes and say, oh, can I have some beer? Can I have some cigarettes? Can I have this? Something that they weren't supposed to get. But because A, they don't really see you. B, um, they have to sell more because it's kind of incentivized for that. And uh, see, they just didn't care sometimes. So we'll go there and it'll be like maybe 40, 60 percentage. 40 percent you'll get it, 60 percent you'll say, be said no, and say, oh, you're too young or whatever. But we did it, and that's how we bought our, our beers, sometimes cigarettes, 
uh, when we were young, underage. Don't do it if you're underage. Uh, there's a limit for a reason. So, yeah, that's how we did it back home. And lastly about this picture is this beautiful picture right here with some flowers. As you can see, the guy is just pulling them out of his trunk. He is not an authorized um, seller of flowers, so he's doing this illegally. And this lady is walking up to them, presumably, but probably not. <laughs> so they lay them out on the thing, and they're just standing there selling it. Uh, a cop won't come up to them, and sometimes maybe they would, but most of the time they would not. Back home, we're still kind of relaxed when it comes to that. There's no, what's your license? Where's your license? Sometimes, of course, there will be. But most of the times there won't, and people just come up. Of course, if it's you know a nice setup, if it's not too too bad, nobody would say anything. But of course, if you're just standing around with your little uh, backpack open or something, you know, shady stuff, then of course somebody might come up to you and, and say something to you. But you have to call the cops for that. They have to come, and you know, it's a whole big deal. So a lot of the times, people just stand like that and sell stuff. Actually, I would I would th I would say that you know we just went to. Uh, Santa Monica here in LA and there was a person just selling shirts right there near Santa Monica Pier so I would say of course, maybe he does have a license maybe he doesn't I'm not sure but yeah just stand there sell the stuff and uh, and yeah so that would be it for for this little view of of Russia and uh, if I were to guess this is somewhere let me see what is this caravan this is a, like a, a, a upgrade of a kiosk. You come in. It's, it's a most. See these two doors. Most like this alcoholic section and non-alcoholic section. So come right here. Get some uh, uh, bread and milk. Come right here. Get some some beer and some other stuff. Maybe this um, uh, groceries right here on the right side, and maybe some home household items right here, like you know your soaps and things like that maybe that's the separation but a lot of times it's alcohol not alcohol uh so yeah let me see i would take three questions and then we go then we off to go and do our own thing oh actually i didn't guess it I, I didn't guess it let me guess it first i would say um big road somewhere under moscow just with my gut feeling right here hey it's a city, Cheripovets. Cheripovets, pretty big city. That's you know, big roads means big city. But again, the reason why I I, I knew it was kind of there is because of spacious roads. Uh, in for example, in Novosibirsk, no spacious roads. We saw in Krasnoyarsk was a spacious road, which was surprising to me. But anywhere in Siberia, it's not a lot of spacious roads. So that kind of gave it away for me. All right, so let me just switch to myself. I'll take three questions from the chat, most recent ones, and then we're off to go. All right. Uh, Pedro, I have a funny question. When you start a video, you say, Привет, друзья. Yes, yes uh, Привет, Россия, or Привет, друзья. Of course, I say, Привет, друзья. Привет, Россия would be if I were to speak to Russian people, but I'm speaking to Russian learners. So I say, I say Привет, друзья, which means, hi, friends. Uh, Fido, do Russians separate beer slash wine and distill liquor liquor in stores? Of course, yes, 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 yes. Um, the kind of a rumor goes that uh, wine and beer is like 18 plus, and then distilled uh, liquor, vodka, cognac, whiskey is 21 plus, which it's kind of like a soft rule. When I turned 18, I went to the big store, you know, legit store. When think of, think of Walmart type, right? And bought distilled liquor there. No questions, you know. So I guess maybe it's kind of like a soft rule. I would say not not something that you would enforce on people. Um, so yeah, and uh, in stores, of course, it's in different sections. Like remember, I mentioned in kiosks in those fridge areas, you would almost never see wine. Maybe one bottle, two bottles in actual inside of the kiosk, but in the fridges, almost never, because you know, people don't buy wine when they're just walking somewhere. They buy beer sometimes. So, in, in the stores especially, yes, of course. Um, okay, DJ NJ, have you ever had halajets? I refuse to eat that. I hate halajets. Halajets, to show you guys what halajets is, is disgusting. Uh, let me type this. Okay. 
Om snel. Oké, okay, Galadjets. Uh, in Engels is het is called Aspic. Galadjets. This nasty thing is, is Galadjets. Oh, this one here is, is, is a better example of like a traditional, I think it's like a, some uh, restaurant holiday. Right here. So it's a jelly with fats and meats. And it's just nasty in nature. Right here. You get one bone. Okay? So you get bone. There's bones in there. You eat bones. And then there's uh, chicken, whatever. And then there's uh, pork. Um, and other things. It's of course varies from uh, person to person. Um, so I hate it. It's just the taste of it is nasty to me. The texture is nasty, and there's nothing. It they say that it's good for you. The gelatin is good for you, but I don't care. It's just nasty. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't eat that. I don't like it. I hate it. And when when uh, we have family gatherings, of course we're always gonna have our dads there, and I never touch it. My mom always tells me, hey, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. Every time I say, no, don't feed that to me. Okay, uh, I'll, let's see, last question. Last question, and then we off to go. What does the word mean, chaladets? Chaladets comes from a word, cholot. Cholot means cold or frost. So you put it in the fridge for it to get that, you know, um, form, because otherwise you just get, you know, it's just, it's just fat it's just gonna go like a liquid so you put it in the fridge and then it kind of holds together all right last one mm, bones are good for us fedor uh i grew up on jello uh, still uh, yeah fedor kakaya samaya lucha vodka fedor what's the best vodka i don't like vodka i'm a fan of beer uh i drink beer a lot myself uh, not you know drowning in beer but you know just a one, one cup on the weekend, I love that. Uh, wine too. I don't like distilled liquor, you know, like vodkas and stuff. So I don't really have an opinion about that. All right, very last question. Something more about Russia. Let's see. I should learning French. No, I'm I'm not learning French. Uh, I want to go back to it one day. Uh, Oh, uh, what's the driving age in Russia? Okay, a baker gin. I was just finding a good question. What's the um, what's the driving age in Russia? Driving age is eighteen. Uh, you go to school. You can go. I think you, you can go to a driving school when you're seventeen. Yes, you, you can for sure. Because my sister went when she was seventeen. So she got her license before her eighteenth birthday, and then on the eighteenth birthday she well, she passed all the exams on. The 18th birthday, she went to the DMV, freshman version of DMV, and got her license on the 18th birthday. So, she, the German age, age is 18, and the schooling system is pretty intense. You have to go through a schooling system for you to get a license. I already have my license here in the States. And for me to even get a license in Russia, I can't just pass an exam or anything. I have to go through like two months of school and, and then get a license, then go to a, a test Pass, which is a pretty tough test. Pass it and then get a license. So, uh, <laughs> brain deads don't get um, don't get license back home. You have to be smart. You have to be attentive. You have to be very skilled to get to get license. So yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for this wonderful stream. This was very informative. I really like it. So I think next time we're gonna do a similar thing. Whatever next time was gonna be with more of a cultural kind of a take on on those street views. And uh, yeah, see you all next time. Fuck up, fuck